Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling Hurt Retrospective. We're your hosts, Edmund. And Pierce, again. Well, yeah, we pretty much established that you're the co-host. Because no True. other no other bugger will do this job. <laughs> Nobody else... Well, I mean, people know that music, it's just that for some reason we seem more interested in it than them. Yeah. Sooner or later I'll have another... I'll have someone else to regularly co-host with me, but for now, this is your purgatory. We're pretty nice down here, you know. Purgatory is kind of disappointing in regards to the you know, level of suffering. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, already off topic, and this is going to be a bit of a different series of shows, in fact, to what we've normally done in the past. Um, as what might be suggested, it's a retrospective of a band. Um, a band that's rather awkward to search for because of them being called Hurt. Most people will probably... Those words. Huh? Those words that, you know, if you search on Google, you get all manner of unrelated stuff. Yeah. Well, most people will probably... Just find I. Oh, God. Yeah. But most people will probably know what I'll find if I just type in Hurt and it's music related. If it says hurt fan or hurt music, it should be okay, but give it to so. Yeah. Um, I mean, finding their albums, you have to type in hurt and the album title. I have that. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Um, Just wanted a minute ago. Uh, for those who aren't aware of Hurt, and I wouldn't be too surprised that quite a lot of people aren't, because they seem to be one of those niche bands. They, they're they still around today, but they started out during sort of the new metal era of metal, and technically fall into that genre, but I'm sure you all agree that a lot of their music isn't you wouldn't really call new metal. There's no elements of it, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's core new metal. It's not like say, like corn or someone. Yeah, I mean they've got sort of prog rock elements, bits of bits of gothic, all, all sorts of influences. I mean the album that we'll be talking about today. There's, I feel like there's a lot of punk influences with a lot of the songs. Yeah. Is it? The one that it does when most of the newer stuff kind of reminds me of a Seether, actually. Uh, I can sort of see that. I mean, I I don't know Seether's music that well, but I know enough of it to see comparisons. There's certain songs that sound quite similar. Mm. Kind of me also a little bit of um, to Soundgarden, maybe a little bit as well. Yeah, I can definitely hear Soundgarden. Um, what makes them stand out? I mean, this is a pretty long preamble, but I feel you kind of need to explain where they're coming from to understand them. Um, a lot of their music seems to be focused around the building of an atmosphere. Mm, I can tell very much. It, it's all very specifically structured, and I have to say, the name Hurt is a very appropriate name. If it's kind of, um, if you look at the lyrical stuff, it's, well, it's about hurting, generally. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's not... Kind of, it's a different kind of suffering. Yeah. But, now, this is why, it, again, it doesn't feel like it falls into the new metal genre. It's... It doesn't feel like the angst-ridden, woe-is-me type hurting. It feels like proper deep, embedded, existential pain. Hmm. Kind of managed to actually kind of touch on topics of depression and stuff like that without just coming across as being whiny. Yeah. got occasionally a hard thing to do with music. Hmm. Um, yeah. We should probably get into the album proper before we just ramble on discussing things without giving a proper framework. Might be no idea. Yeah. Um, so yeah, their first album, uh, which is a self-titled album, um, Finding it even harder. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had to specifically type in Hurt self-titled to find it. Yeah, well, I suppose it's difficult to put out album. Self-titled is something that's not often used that much outside of albums or music, so mm. hopefully it should bring out the way kind of results. Yeah. Um, yeah, it came out sort of 
yeah, it came out in 2000, so really gives you an idea. This band's been around a while, although lots of lineup changes and things like that. Um, mm. It's one of those cases where the vocalist is the only original member left. So it's it like, usually the vocalist seems to be like the front man of the band, they're the one that wants to keep it going, and mm. everyone else just kind of moves around. It's like, I want to keep doing it, it's my band, it's my baby, <laughs> I must do. Yeah. I mean, he he is also doing a side project at the moment, which it might be an idea to look into at some point. I'm going to do a, a kind of retrospective. Yeah. Well, this is a new thing, so, you know, we could probably do retrospective what they're doing now. Futrospective. <laughs> what? Basically, what we do is we talk about something that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Retrospective, you know, for the future. Uh, that just puts me in mind of an episode of Deep Space Nine, but that's a rant for later when we're not recording. Um, so, their lyrics are very interesting because, as I said, they don't feel like the whining, woe is me type new metal lyrics. They feel like definite frustration and pain mm, I can see that it's got it's kind of we're kind of poetic level to it I guess yeah um, now we'll go into it uh, first song Unkind I mean now this is what I was meaning when I said uh, they feel like they've got a lot of punk influences the first song is a lot more raw than the others mm. so yeah uh, but as an opening track it definitely it gets your attention it's not heavy guitar riff straight off the bat. Yeah, yeah. It's not quite a punch to the throat type gets your attention, which a lot of bands do try, and ultimately you just go, yeah. That's not. No. But it is quite a visceral effect, um, and opening lines. A perfect cancer was spreading and twisting. You start explaining and I'll stop pretending. That all of my actions are for you and all of my heartache is from. Mm. So immediately you're getting into some pretty... Well, I'll put it as simply as this. This sounds like the sort of stuff that you might say to an ex. It does seem very much like that, especially since he's going on about, yeah, you seem like you're in a perfect good place, but to me you seem like a white bitch. So, mm. the, the, basically, it's like talking to someone who doesn't think that they've done anything wrong, but in his opinion they have. Mm. Well, you gave your body to all who are willing, and took these pleasures that I wasn't filling, and everything sacred to me just adds to the heaving when I breathe. Mm. So, yeah. That's a very bad breakup, right? Yeah, but it doesn't just... This is where we get into the why it doesn't feel like simply the angst-ridden, pathetic whining of new metal. Because it doesn't just feel like a breakup. Mm. It feels like a very nuanced, you know, you could apply it to a lot of different situations, whether platonic or romantic. Yeah. So, I mean, it seems like it's just around just like a breakup. But... There's probably quite a few other instances where such a song could work, because it's not you know, explicit about it being about an ex. Yeah, I mean, even though you had been used before I saved myself for you, but the contents of my stomach fell when I was told the truth. After one last desperation, I begged you for some time. God damn it all, I loved you, and you were unkind. Mm. The thing is, I don't want to say mean in this kind of relationship with another person. It could be, you know, a member of family or something, in theory. Mm. Or someone they just trusted a lot. Yeah. Or a good friend, maybe. It could be any of them. Mm. Yeah, he does some stuff. It doesn't sound like it's coming from someone saying, Whoa, oh, what is me? I'm going to go and, like, yeah, jump for golden because I'm really, really happy to be unhappy. Yeah. The world is against me over there. Mm. More kind of weight to it than that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know much about the song itself, aside from what I've heard. It'd be interesting, to, I'm going to look into whether I can get sort of band perspectives, you know, see if I can get in contact with the lead singer and see what he has to say about the songs, but 
Mm. The consider motion slider is a case of you talk to someone about it and in case of usually they'll be like, Oh yeah, this is what the song's about. Other cases like it's not really about anything, it just felt like it works. Mm. It depends very much on the songs and the person writing it. Yeah. But I've listened through a lot of their music and it feels like they're all very specifically crafted to fit certain situations. It's quite possible. A lot of bands do have that kind of structure when it comes to writing lyrics. Mm. Now the next one, better. This is a rather frustrated song, I feel. Frustrated? Well, I mean, the chorus, it, basically the refrain, it's not really a chorus per se, but the refrain of the song is, they say it gets better before it gets worse. We kind of, okay, so it's, it's, oh, you can say it's going to get better before it gets worse, but actually that doesn't often happen. Mm. It does go off and happen, although another time it's like, oh, it's going to get better shortly soon, and then it gets worse again, so, well, that's disappointing. Yeah, I mean, well, just consider Limp Biscuit's discography. <laughs> yeah, they're all... Yeah, they're, they're, they're only their earlier stuff is better than their later stuff as well, mm. so they're just constant decline, they didn't really have a high starting point. Mm. And um, just generally you'll get sort of attitudes of people saying things will get better and then <coughs> so, hmm? so, uh. <laughs> so are those going to be our punching bags for this year maybe well the things that we've experienced and quite a lot of death and mm. we can say if it's something we do not like yeah so uh, as if it's things we're just randomly attacking it's things we do actually know relatively well yeah unfortunately <laughs> yeah that's the thing, we, if people hadn't caught on to this fact, we are gluttons for punishment! Well, it's it kind of people that, you know, we think, oh, someone's going to really like this thing or criticise this thing, we're going to make sure we actually experience it for ourselves to see what it's like, even if it does turn out to be absolutely awful. Yeah. It's part of the reason why I do, at some point, intend to watch through all the Twilight movies. I did not feel for her, sorry for you, at all. Oh, you're doing it with me, dude! Even if I have to chain you to the chair. I knew you were going to say that. I was expecting it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we will have a lot of alcohol to hand before we do it. That would be very helpful. I mean, a lot of alcohol and probably a lot more. Um, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, better... Now, the framing of it is very much a... It's chunks as opposed to you know, verse-chorus-verse-chorus chorus structure. It's just a very regular structure, really. Yeah. It's sort of like, as I say, it's not, there's not really a chorus per se, it's just a refrain of the sentiment of, because, first it goes, because they say it gets better before it gets worse. You know, it gets better, so of course it gets worse. Next time this yeah. refrain turns up is did it make you feel better right before it got worse? I used to make you feel better, but now it just hurts. Well, that's just a fitly kind of uh, theme to the hurt have a lot of, you know, not being very happy. Mm. The problem is, I can't kind of say, oh, well, it's going to get better before it gets worse, but you know, pretty much this is a way of stating, well, it's going to get shittier again. If you get yeah. I mean... I think about it, actually, really, really depressing really things. <laughs> the thing is... As I said the other night, um, I kind of needed to listen through them because I've been feeling like shit, so... That's a weird thing, I think, though. Certain bands, even if most of their music is not happening, it still actually helps when you're in the same kind of situation. Mm. Just can relate to it, so. Yeah. I think it's ju it's a bit of a cathartic release for you. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like, okay, then, so these people are singing about the kind of way I'm feeling right now. Mm. I mean, the opening verse is those things you thought that were obscene will quickly become your routine and he invited you over an addict quickly gets undressed with something to get off her chest you made a trade because you're sober and it stings to remind you of all that's behind you but I don't want to lose you right now because they say it gets better before it gets worse you know it gets better, so of course it gets worse. <laughs> now this is where we get into the not just doing the woe is me. This feels more like it's framing a particular story, you know. It's sort of, 
if you like um, of all things to uh, make comparisons to but it feels like it could have been influenced by something like Lab OM you know with mm -hmm. the whole framework of um, you know the highs and lows and of course Mimi dying of consumption and all the pain that's caused by falling in love with a seamstress I'm doing <laughs> inverted commas you, you can't <laughs> see that <laughs> Well, in the context of the time, seamstress would actually mean hooker. <laughs> Do you know, the you really the inverted commas, your emphasis on the word kind of implies that anyway. True. But anyway, it, I mean, this is more emphasised by the next verse of Your body's made of dollar bills. You spend them all on some cheap thrill. But what when you're older, you stuck a point into your arm. But did you contemplate the harm as it moved up your shoulder? Did it make you feel better right before it got worse? I used to make you feel better, but now it just hurts. And there's no hope because I'm in love with you. I cannot cope because I'm addicted to. Wow. It's so, a totally happy outlook. Yeah. So it's all framework of, you know, prostitution, addiction. It's one of those, it's simultaneously not a relatable subject in that not everyone goes through the situations of prostitution and addiction but how it becomes relatable is in how everyone goes through these feelings of desperation and just trying to find some sort of release and each time you find that release it just it gets harder to find a release that's equivalent you know you become immune to yeah. it you want more and more and more mm. so this it's is a cheery fun. episode yeah. well we can't really get much cheerier because we're in the topic at hand fair point <laughs> but yeah everything is getting worse before it gets better mm. it's getting worse yeah, yeah um uh, better musically now this is where we get to the again not sounding like new metal because musically it sounds more how would you describe uh, better musically it's not uh, hmm it reminds me of something but I can't think of what hmm I can't remember a little bit actually a really early placebo because I done yeah I can hear that it's a very gradual build up hmm yeah, and there's only the guitar bits where he starts actually was with the cure as well yeah um, it's very much a sort of building on atmosphere and doing a gradual build up so that you get a full impact when it's, they're really saying things are getting worse well, I mean, I'm just very much a fan of this kind of style of music it starts out and builds up mm. I'm a fan of post rock cultural, which is pretty much entirely built on that concept yeah yeah, well, we're both sort of fans of that sort of style where they, they're they really trying to get an impact. I mean, think of most of Devin Townsend's work. Yeah, stuff like, um, say, Praise the Lord, for example. Mm. Does that very well. And, um... De Deadhead does that as well, I remember. Yeah, Deadhead does if that. Was, if you go about Stropping Long Night, you've got things like Brown the Young does it as well. Mm. So. Uh, Death of Music, that... That really does the slow boot build up. You can hear it was slowly getting bigger. At some point, this is going to explode. And yeah. Just, if you look properly, it is amazing. Yeah. And her really hits the nail on the head with doing it. You know, it's all. Every so often, they tease things, and that's how you get it right. Because if you want to do a slow build up, you can't just do a slow build up you need to tease things so that you you when it really hits home you're sort of like whoa <laughs> i know kung fu sorry i, I couldn't resist that about building up like if it doesn't tease coffee it would just kind of shift style slowly just like not shift tempo a little bit maybe mm. we can change up the kind of drumming or something just to make it kind of sense. a little bit different to keep you interested yeah so everything is coming together at the end mm. So the uh, Faith No More did on Tony as well. Yeah, well, Faith No More have done that with a few of their songs. Mm, so that we also reviewed Faith No More. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would do a Faith No More retrospective, but there'll be so many albums! <laughs> you got a huge gap in the middle. You can say, oh, we're never going to take a break. 17 years or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, it was 17... No, 18 years. <laughs> it was 17 yeah. or 18 years. It, all I can say for definite is it was even longer than for Chinese democracy. The difference is... That's why it's democracy. It's actually good. Yeah. It's worth the wait. Anyway, back to Hurt. Uh, the next song, Confession. It says riffs, quite impressive. Yeah. Very chunky. It's a very odd kind of sound to it, because it sounds like the actual guitar riffs are kind of more towards the forefront, but the lyrics, the vocals, everything I think of it, a bit further back behind. Yeah. Um, and the second half of the song kind of just does that almost completely into near the kind of the absence, I guess, of anything. Yeah. It, it kind of... Now, lyrically... It kind of reminds me a bit of The Cure. Mm. Sound-wise, it kind of reminds me of Nine Inch Nails. A little bit, yeah. There's a little bit of Nine Inch Nails, a little bit of something westward. There's a little bit, a little bit of the kind of pornography here with Cure there as well. As well. Yeah. It's particularly in the record. Yeah. Um, I mean, Stabbing Westwood, I only vaguely know. I mean, uh, it's mainly that one particular song. Um, oh. Huh? You can't remember the name of. Uh, I won't become the thing I hate. Oh, the thing I hate, yeah. Yeah. I don't want that album, so. Yeah. It's true, I can say Fender Style, I guess. Some of it is more kind of airy, I guess. Which kind mm. of makes, is what makes you think this makes me mind a bit. This makes me mind a bit, what am I saying? Uh, this reminds me of. The opening verse um, I'm drowning in my own confusion. I'm begging, but it still doesn't move you. I'm searching for a new resolution. And that's all. I think when you look through the lyrics and things like that, it explains why it's got this sort of ethereal effect to the vocals and just a, a very heavy and chunky sound. And it's sort of trying to emulate the idea of, you know, psychologically drowning and suffocating. <laughs> I mean, with a kind of sort of like confession, it sounds like, you know, something's eating away at him when he, he wants to confess, but he can't do it, so it's kind of just dragging him down. Yeah. Um, I wallow in my own disillusion. I was shaken, but it still couldn't lose you. I saw heaven through the eyes which elude me. So it's almost like a detachment from himself. It fits with the theme music as well. Yeah. Um, I mean... Just for a bit of insight, when I'm going through particularly low moments, I do feel like I'm detached from myself. I, uh, there's sort of, it's almost like there's two minds, but it's not like a split personality disorder or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's more like an out of body experience without having an out of body experience, if that makes sense. So, I was going to say, it kind of sounds like it's, you know, being sent in third person. Hmm. Uh, I mean, quite often, well, my attitude, I very much, I get angry with the depression, and this almost feels like frustration and anger that's built up towards his own mental condition. Mm. Yeah. You know, I feel something creeping in. I can't deny I'm sick with this. The sickest place I've ever been. You generally you, when you're going through depression, you don't you feel sick with your very existence. Mm, that's the kind of way I've heard it described by people, I know. Mm. Um, so, so, you know you're just gonna you just end up with a bit of sheer apathy to you know think or do anything and even if you do think I want to do something you don't feel as if you can do it yeah I mean well just before doing the recording I was having an impossible time getting out of bed because it was just sort of like uh, can I be bothered with doing anything <laughs> I get that question yeah the difference is is between occasionally and just that constant feeling and here's where we get to why Hurt has been a bit of a has been a good band for me to listen to because it kind of it's very relatable for me. Yeah. Um, you always enjoy a band if you can relate to the music in some way or other. Mm. But always have to. Some bands are just really enjoyable in themselves. But if you can relate to a particular artist, you can usually kind of resonate with all of it. Yeah. I mean, 
The final verse is, uh, I feel something creeping in, I can't deny I'm sick with this. In and out this poison tongue, think of all the harm I've done. Now I feel it coming strong, so do I, it's so alone. And now that everything is gone, I admit that I was... And it just trails off from there. Which, that seems to be a motif of Hurt's songs, where they, they'll they have songs which just trail off for you to create your own ending to. Yeah, it's a really interesting way of doing it. Well, I've heard a few other songs where other bands do that kind of thing, they kind of either kind of just disappear, you know, dissipate, or they suddenly just end the part of the sentence or whatever. Mm. I don't know one of the Catatonia songs does that. It kind of just carries on saying, oh yeah, especially he's come through, he's finally met up with his brother or something, and then he decides to just end his life. Mm. And the Boomer's last lyric is just him going, uh, you've left me, whatever, and it just cuts out immediately. So, yeah. Well, okay, that's not exactly how I'm going to Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean in, in some. In some ways, I wonder if part of the intent is to create a cyclical song. I'm not sure. It's sort of like, you could go, I admit that I was drowning in my own confusion, I'm begging, mm. but... It, yeah. You know, it, it could be that their framing is designed to create cyclical songs. Considering a lot of the topics they have in their songs, it will kind of work in kind of say you just can't get out. Mm. Feels like you're a beat constantly, and you need to be, well, you say it gets better for a good first. Interestingly enough, this song, uh, if I remember correctly, um, this particular song, uh, yeah, programming credits given to Brian Winchell on the entire album, except Confession by Jonathan Minnis. So that might. Oh, so so it might be because different programming yeah. that it has the sound that it does. Well, we did it probably. We kind of wanted a certain kind of sound and we to get some aspect of it. Hmm. Um. Oh. Lost. This might actually be my favourite song on the album. Yeah, fair enough. Um. I'm not, I'm not sure I have a particular favourite that stands out to me. Hmm. Well, you know what has thus far been my favourite song of Hurts. Yeah, I do. Lost, very different from the rest of the album, I think, because that's a much more toned down and acoustic sound. Hmm. Well, it's pretty much just that. Uh, there's no drums. Mm. There's no keyboard or anything. It's just music guitar and singing around. Right? Yeah. Um, and now... It takes skill to be able to do the whole acoustic guitar and just singing, because there's a danger of becoming the white guy with acoustic guitar. <laughs> white guy with acoustic guitar is a term that I've picked up off of another reviewer, who he basically uses it as a pejorative term to describe, you know, Sam Smith, oh... Ed Sheeran, Bruno Mars, before he was doing all the really funky stuff that he's been doing recently, you know, when he did the Lazy Song, um, you know, just generally, you know, the sort of douchebags that you come across at university who play the acoustic guitar, and it's clearly designed so that they can pick up chicks. Pretty much they're kind of doing it just to show off, and look at me, I'm a musician. Mm. I don't necessarily actually have any skill. Yeah. Well, the frustrating thing is they do have a skill of sorts. It's just, it's all, all their energy, creative energy, is put into just producing something bland and homogenous. Mm, so very, uh, what's the word? Um, safe, I guess. Yeah. With it. Which is ironic considering it's all designed to fuck your daughter. <laughs> this is true. Of course, it's not as bad as One Direction, where their songs were all designed because they wanted to fuck your daughter. It's chemistry. It was science. Anyway, um, so Lost sits in that you have to know the instrument, if yeah. that makes sense. You've got to have the energy and creative control to be able to produce something that's amazing, and they really manage it with Lost. This guitar is a ballad done right. 
Yeah. I mean, like a lot of those songs, it's telling a story. I mean, the opening lines, On an old dusty road, he made his way to try to get home. He slaved all day in such dirty clothes. He wore rags, that's all that we have. Mm. But the things he made were with his hands, and the things that he made were made to last. And just one of these things that he made was a man he will say that I am. I, it sounds like first lyric. Yeah. Once again, it's not you know, kind of windy lyrics, it's fictional, not fans. I, I kind of wonder if maybe um, this is just gleaning from odd things that I've read on his the lead singer's Twitter feed, things like that. I kind of wonder if maybe it could be talking about his father. That's fair, yeah. I, I wouldn't like to say for definite one way or the other. It's just, you know, you pick up odd things and you wonder, oh, could there be a link? There's a lot of other stuff since you've based around personal experiences from the front row. Mm. But it's very much a... It's the defining point of personal experiences, but also framed around telling a story. And this is very... It's very personal. Sorry. Of being a kind of personal kind of things that can, that can relate to himself, as it comes as in to express his feelings directly to the lyrics. Yeah, I mean, you do find that a lot of singers will specifically craft songs to reflect how they personally feel about particular situations. I mean, look at uh, Metallica with um, "Until It Sleeps." Now, that is actually to do with. James Hetfield's relationship with religion and how he views how it affected his parents because because yeah, uh, they died of cancer and he feels that because um, they were Christian scientists that had a lot to do with it you know they wouldn't go to get treatment things like that so the idea is that you know had they not followed that particular branch of the religion, they might not have died. Mm. Exactly. I mean, so, yeah, the problem I have some people is like, oh, well, it was because it's religion, it was protect me. And I was like, mm, religion you know, has its place. There's just pure science here that says, probably oh, should be a church Yeah. I mean, it's a simple song, but sometimes sometimes I feel simple songs are the most effective. Yeah, I've, I've had some very, very simple songs that I think are pretty bloody amazing. Hmm. I mean, if you think to, say, um, Pluck by System of a Down, lyrically that's quite a simple song, but conceptually that is a very powerful description of how the Armenians feel about their whole situation. I won't go into that now, that's for the politics cast, which, at the rate we're going, we might as well start doing something like that. It always seems to come up. Yeah. But anyway, none the more for that. It, simple song, but effective. I mean, there is a refrain verse of, I want to know where to go from here, I want to know where it leads. I'm far away gambling with all I've held dear, and I want to know where it leads. Uh, that's actually repeated four times, but it's effective in how how it's framed, because it just it really helps emphasise what could be the relationship with his father. It, you know, just say for argument's sake, what I'm suggesting is the case. You know, for argument's sake, it is to do with his father. It 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 feels like a very effective way of framing a sort of respectful relationship, you know, that he is what he is mm. because of his father and, you know, his father made him a man. I'm like a man, are you? No, no, Donny Osmond. <laughs> this is an obvious thing to go into. As I say, now, I could be completely wrong and it could be about something completely different. This is just an interpretation I have. If anyone who knows the band out there can explain any differently, please say in the comments, because I am intrigued. I want to know more. I, I want to know as much as possible about this band, because I find the bands that really hit home to me are ones like this, where they have relatable subjects, but 
at the same time it comes from personal experience and this it's in personal experience they can they put their own full weight behind it yeah they know exactly what they've been through and then they can kind of put that forth through the therapist story yeah I mean this is one of the key problems that a lot of I'm afraid I have to lump them into the new metal genre just because that's how I discovered them through a top 10 list of new metal bands but um, that's the problem that a lot of new metal bands have in that a lot of their subject matter is not relatable it does come from personal experience but it's sort of like I can't relate to this I, so I get nothing the way yeah I, I get nothing from what you're saying all this sounds like is angst ridden whining and yes whining not complaining there's a difference what I'm doing now is complaining. This is whining! That was just for all you bronies out there who might be listening to this. <laughs> and I realise I just outed myself as a brony, but fuck it. I'm sure only some people are just about. Anyway. Next one? Yeah, might as well. Fortunately, I was smart enough to look up all the lyrics. Amazingly, I was actually able to find the lyrics of all the songs. Okay. Right, so you bleed, which it's a pretty obnoxious title. Yeah, great song, but God, I hate that. It's spelled you bleed, and it's one word, which makes it even worse. It's made me think of you play by you, so, which is a piece of shit. Not familiar with that one. <laughs> yeah, the title is obnoxious, but it, out of the songs, which at this point is probably the most kind of new metal style one. Yeah. I, I definitely agree there. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just it's it's one of those this could easily be one of the songs that people heard and caused her to get lumped in with the new metal genre. Yeah, quite possible. Because there's always the one song that people hear and that affects Colors everything. Yeah. Um I mean, let's see. Enter Sandman, Stairway to Heaven, Dark Side of the Moon. Well, most bands have the, that one song that everyone's heard, it seems. Yeah. Often it's also some of the worst songs they've done. Mm. Well, I'm not going to comment as far as Pink Floyd are concerned, because that will just get... with these particular bands. Sorry? <laughs> What's the thing with these particular bands, just to get a lot of... Mm. Most well-known songs are often some of the worst ones they've done. Limp Biscuit with Rolling. Yeah. Uh... Oh, yeah. So, You Bleed. Yeah. Uh, lyrically it's much more in the new metal vein as well because it's sort of like uh, opening verse if only I was not a clown you're no good they say to me I'll show them that I'm not aroused but you're no good if you're not proud and put your feet back on the ground I not quite have that same kind of um, fluidity I guess mm. uh, this is most albums have a weak song, and I would argue that You Bleed is the weak song of this album. Yeah, there's just something not quite there. Yeah, quite. Because it makes them kind of stand out from other artists and say, kind of, this one kind of just falls in place with it, which is not really what you want. Mm. Uh, I mean, it was a kind of, really kind of droney as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I like that kind of a pretty song and a lot of stuff. In this case, it just doesn't do anything with that interesting. Yeah. Well, the thing is, her, as I say, I've listened to a fair amount of their stuff. They, they benefit most from the atmospheric build-up. You Bleed doesn't really have that. No, it, it doesn't. Sometimes like it should have that kind of thing, and then never really goes anywhere. With it. Yeah. It just meanders about a bit, mm. and then kind of. Just it's just dull, I guess, is really a way to it. Yeah. I mean, it's not a song that I would automatically avoid. It, it's an alright song. No, it's not. But, in terms of the album, it is the weakest. Indeed, I agree with that. Yeah. I can't think of anything else. I mean, I was even about half it already. I can't really remember anything from the other part that is quite as lacking as this. Mm. I, I think... Yeah, and already, even though I just listened, re-listened to it a few seconds ago, it's gone out of my head again. <laughs> this is one of those songs that you know, think, oh, I remember that. For like five minutes time, I'm talking about it, and then they just 
Mm. 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 So, might as well go on to the next song, really. Uh, Summer's Lost. You know what the song makes me think of? Hmm? An album. Yeah, I can hear that. <laughs> it's it's a short song, it's shortest on the album, but in just less than two minutes. It's like one minute fifty-six. It really builds up tension. Hmm. That's a real life song. Yeah. It's quite a simple song, I guess. Mm. But there's, just, there's a lot to it, considering how simple the actual instrumentation is and how short it is. Yeah. I mean... I just don't know how atmospheric it is, I really like. Yeah, I mean, it's got that really atmospheric build-up, and every time you... It, it's very much the teasing song, because every so often you expect a big explosion, but it's sort of like, nope, we're holding back. I managed to pull it off despite being really short. Yeah. Some of the lyrics are a bit peculiar. Um, like, final verse. With winter's mean brimstone, I set sail for Euphrates. All I can say is it's a goddamned shame. <laughs> it's not like, wait, Euphrates? What? This is going kind to of just kind of fade out a little bit at the end of the one. Yeah. You could put it in a loop, not really know that easily where that short stretch is. Hmm. Yeah, as we say, not much to talk about this song by virtue of the fact that it is such a short song. It's almost an interlude. It's also really good. Mm. It's very much an interlude style. Yeah. But again, I've had some interludes before that are just sort of, I don't know, like a minute and a half long, just an interlude, but that like, is really bloody good. Mm. I think this is one of I've the. I've had albums before, like the intro tracks are some of the best in them, so. This is like an intro bit. Mm. This is some of the best things in I think this is one of the reasons why You Bleed doesn't stick with us that much because Lost is before it and Summer's Lost is after it so it's maybe it's got it's, I guess like a lot of other a couple of other albums have done in the case that there's a couple of songs that are not that good and having to be in between some of the best stuff in the album yeah it's like oh well, I got this one song in there, but I want to listen to the next song already mm. um so yeah next song uh, the new disease, um, instrumental track. I think it. I don't know where it is. Well, the reason I say I think is it sounds like they might have done sort of vocal effects to underlie a lot of the song. Yeah, but it's a bit kind of using it, the vocals as an instrument rather than well as vocals. Yeah, I mean, bear in mind it's not an a cappella song by that sentiment. It's <laughs> no. It's just that you've got this strange sort of, not really static, more a sort of, I'm not sure how to describe it. Oh, um, no, there's a word for it. Hmm. Oh, no. Anyway, interesting what it is, I actually really like the drumming in the song. Yeah. Kind of marching then to struggle to it. Again, it's one of those songs that, it does get quite explosive, but also benefits from a great build-up. Yeah, without the kind of constraints of needing to like do another verse or horror structure, that's the build-up that I have to be fully focused on as well. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to instrumentals, because there's two instrumentals on the album, uh, with the instrumentals, you really need to be careful with how you how you construct them, because some bands do instrumentals <laughs> and you just go, what was the point in this? <laughs> like, um, cause, uh, arbitrary. Yeah. It's so like, uh, Thousand Sons, one of <laughs> Linkin Park's albums. Now, that has the problem of it's got several instrumentals, but those instrumentals could easily be just one track. I was on the before, they kind of have, say, about 17 tracks, and it turns out like six of them are just little intermittent interludes in between the other ones. Yeah. And you just right, it can be really good. Yeah. It quite often isn't. Yeah. I mean, in this case, it's not like they could make it work with another song. I mean, it could flow into another song, but this instrumental has to be as is. I think it's quite nice. It is very much an kind of interlude song in itself. Mm. It's kind of relaxing, I guess, in a kind of strange way, despite also being a little untitling. 
Yeah. Anyway, we're kind of brooding and fighting on the background. What does remind me of actually is Heat Miser by Massive Attack. Mm hmm. Another Jupiter's Unlaid. I'll probably have this in there. I'm going protection. That breathing effect makes me think of that. I, I don't know Massive Attack stuff that well, so. That's fair. I'm pretty fan of them, so. Yeah. I only really know. I don't even know by name, I just know by sound they're fairly well known tracks. Okay. It's just something that came to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, obviously, there's not much to talk about when it comes to instrumentals, because you can't really dissect. Well, they show like this, but it's mostly you know, the same kind of pattern for the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough to keep it going for that kind of length, but it doesn't really evolve or change enough to actually be able to properly cover it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not like you can really dissect lyrics or anything, although there is one thing that can be said in that, as you say, it feels very sort of unsettling. It almost feels like it could be sort of inner workings of a mind. It does kind of feel like a static or a white noise, I guess. Mm. Even though there's a lot of sound. <laughs> oh yeah, it's kind of that kind of, there's a lot of sound, but also kind of a strange absence of actually, you know, any structure to it, even mm. if it doesn't have a structure, which is it's too hard to explain. Because then you probably just leave on the background for hours and then just fall into it. Mm. Um, so yeah, next song, Denim. I have no fucking clue why it's called Denim. <laughs> I just decided to give it the name for some reason, I don't know why. I mean, most of the other songs I can go, okay, yeah, I get why it's called that, but Denim. Uh, Maybe just oh, oh, the song. Uh, uh, I'm wearing jeans. Don't even know. <laughs> it does have some kind of meaning behind it. I just don't know what it is. Well, denim is in the song, lyrics-wise. But the verse goes, "I should mention <coughs> where I'll lay you when I'm done. You're so special, special like the other ones. I'm demented. I am just like everyone. In my denim, I'm protected from the blood." Huh? Uh, I don't really understand that symbolism. Yeah. If um, there is any symbolism there. Yeah, I mean, this is probably one of their more oblique songs where it's just sort of like, what does that mean? I mean, this comes from someone that listens to things like Battle of Mice and Mars Volta and Sunk Fix Square, but the lyrics make no real bloody sense at all. And I'm still thinking, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I listen to Mr. Bungle. And, um, yeah, and Primus and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's sort of like, when I'm going, what the fuck does that mean? You know it's a bit of a confusing one. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to describe the song. It's, it's very, it seems kind of light-hearted. Mm. It's instrumentally. Yeah, it has a bit more of a... Yeah, it has a bit more of a punk-like feel to it. Hmm. It's reminding me of something, but I don't know what. Hmm. Yeah, they're the same kind of thing we have with the Shrine album. A lot of the songs remind me of different things, which is a good sign because there's just some kind of variety to it. Yeah. They've got a lot of influences and they're not going to kind of resist using those influences, but they've also many of them, they're not focusing too much on one particular style. They come kind of across as being cliche or anything. Yeah, of course. That's one thing you can definitely not say about her is that their lyrics are cliche. <laughs> exactly. Because we were thinking this made no sense. Um, yeah. Uh, the opening lines are I was wondering, are precious to the bone, flesh is skin deep, covered with a crimson comb. What? Okay. What does this mean? <laughs> I think if you ever beat the band, this is probably going to be the one song you want to ask them about, mate. Yeah. Like, what are you on about, dude? It's like, J. Lauren wins. What the fuck are you on about? <laughs> I'm sure there is some kind of meaning behind it, or maybe the meaning itself is just stream of consciousness. Mm, yeah, I've done um, streams of consciousness as well, and it's sort of like, what the fuck is this about? Well, I think that's the kind of thing they actually quite like about some bands. They do just, they don't bother actually, you know, focusing on making anything with any particular structure or sense. I mm. think these words sound really good sung together, let's put those in there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes streams of consciousness. things like Square is kind of thing I actually really like. No. I think, oh, we will see along to this, even if it makes it really simple or it's screamed. Yeah. In this case, it seems like a stream of consciousness that does have an internal logic to it, but what that logic is, is very difficult to permeate. So, kind of, uh, people call you what, what, like, philosophy is that? Mm. Penetrating. Mm, I don't write a thesis on this. Mm. 
as well, yeah. yeah. Well, let's see. Just discussing the various songs, we've already been going for over an hour and 20 minutes. That's easily a thesis. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, Denim is a peculiar song. Well, even musically, it's, it feels kind of bouncy. It's probably the best way I mean, to mm. describe it. Which is strange for Hurt. Yeah. Because maybe we just thought, okay, I've got all these songs about, like, really depressing things I'm just going to write this one song that doesn't make much sense and is actually kind of happy in a strange kind of it's kind of way it's like I'm actually I'm happy then just everything is fine mm. and kind of false happiness I guess because I'm pretty sure it isn't actually a happy song <laughs> well this is where I wonder if maybe J. Lauren Wentz does have depression because you do go through the whole putting on a false smile and things like that so considering what I've heard of these songs and the kind of lyrics they've written or whatever I would say it's quite a good chance he does mm. uh, I mean I don't have any experienced person as far as I'm aware they haven't been diagnosed with it but <laughs> I know quite a few people who have and it seems to come across that in a way yeah well everyone has depressed moments but these songs do come across like someone who actually has depression because there's the numbness there's the distant feelings there's the trying to connect and going back to unkind there's just the feelings of abandonment when you're in your worst state so it all seems like he could very well be discussing his own experiences with struggling through depression it's difficult to say because i think he was like 17 (coughs) when he first did this all so it's hard to say Mm, it's quite possible, but really knowing what it's like to go through high school. Mm. It's a shit of place. Yeah. Most people I know seem to agree that this, the high school is pretty much the worst possible time you can be in. Mm. Well, it's sort of like raging hormones, not understanding anyone, <laughs> feeling no like... consequences for doing anything really. Yeah. That's the problem. People can do whatever the fuck they want and get away with it. They know that. Mm. So, oh, he's just a kid, he's just there, uh, boys will be boys and that kind of crap. You know, you'll probably just, you know, suplex someone through a bench or something. Mm. Anyway, moving on to Abuse of Sid, or SID, as it's titled in this... <laughs> the question is, what is Sid? Mm. I mean, this seems to be a much I more... I actually really like this song. Yeah, it, it's a very impactful... This is where we get to punch to the throat territory, where it's sort of like really impactful, grabbing your intention. The hard guitar, well, look at that kind of reverb thing going on with it as well. Yeah, know. it's very harsh guitars, not hard guitars. It harsh instrumentation. Um, it kind of gives me not much as just going to give me the kind of new metal style feel to it, but it's done the right way here. Yeah, it's the disturbed new metal as opposed to limp biscuit new metal mm. I consider they're not disturbed if there's no mm. I consider there's a kind of it's kind of uh, not really not sound disturbed as a kind of banner use yeah. no. not, not sound wise but lyrically possibly mm. actually that makes sense but anyway but the instrumentation does actually remind me of placebo here thinking about it mm-hmm. well they're more kind of heavy well, it seems like um, Brookshire House for example mm-hmm. Heart and scared of girls a little bit because it's a bit of a harder edge stuff. Mm. Um, so, uh, opening lyrics. This is where we get into... So, I mean, the title alone is a bit worrying, but um, you want him, you need him. It's so hard to please him. You just don't dare. And inside you're burning with some <coughs> secret yearning. You must not care. Still, won't you oh, help wow. me? I'm flawed, desperate, angry with God because he just won't care. Oh, excuse me your mourning, how calloused and boring I brush your hair. And see your face, empty smile, I touch that place, and all the while, you know it won't stop. Alarm. Yeah. <laughs> and so it seems like it's talking about a chain of abuse. Yeah, I mean, it, the thing that does remind me of, actually, a little bit, is, um, oh, what song is it? Uh, Separation Anxiety. Yeah. You get a piece of it, makes you think of that. Yeah. You know, it has that kind of atmosphere, you know, it feels like everything's just collapsing and falling apart. Mm. And those songs can't really do that. Something just went to pull it off, and it, you can kind of feel like, yeah, this is not a nice place to be in. Yeah. <laughs> but it works. It does. Mm. It, it's. It, you know, compared to not having a favourite song, I think this might actually be one that turns out to be the most. Mm. I. 
I'd kind of go Lost would be my favourite and then this would be my second favourite mm. Lost is good but this is kind of the thing about this is really stand out to me that's fair enough um, was it Lost Summer might actually be second it's mm. being ridiculously short <laughs> Well, the other things like Song 2 by Blur, for example, that's just two minutes. It's considered a masterpiece by many. Mm. Uh, I just remember hearing a, a Weezer track that had a drum beat that was eerily similar to Song 2. Weezer even existed. But yeah, uh, that they... was like a, a band that was around in my childhood. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I only remembered they existed because of one guy doing a retrospective of their albums. Yeah, fair. Funnily enough, the guy who introduced me to her. Oh, okay. that's fair. Yeah, the abuse of... I'm really not sure whether it's SID or SID, because in the track listing, all the track listings I've seen, it's capitalised as SID. Hmm. I don't know whether SID means something in particular. Hmm. Maybe we'll do. If it's capitalised, it probably means it is an acronym. Which mm. is an acronym for what? Yeah. Maybe what I can do. Yeah, I think I will look into that sort of thing because it bugs me. Not in a sort of. So why is it capitalised? Yeah. Not in a sort of. This is stupid type bugs me. Just in a. What is the significance of it being capitalised? Yeah, I mean, presumably there is a reason for it. Mm. I mean, it's not like, say, a lot of Japanese music where they just capitalise things for the shit fucking hell of it. Yeah. In this case, it's probably done for a very particular reason. Yeah. Or in the case of some German songs and sentences where random letters are capitalised because that's the typical standard of their language. I don't get it, mm. but I just know that that's the case because I've read a lot of German stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, a lot of German lyrics. As far as I'm aware, hurt on German, so. Yeah. Yeah, no. Hurt's Californian, <coughs> I think. Never. Um, yeah, and just checking the back cover, it is capitalised as SID, so whatever that means... Well, presumably it is an acronym or something. Mm. Anyway, it is a damn good song. Mm. The best in the album, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, just looking through the lyrics, it's sort of like, and all while he's been using you, yes, all the while he's abusing you, so it finally dawned on me yesterday morning, I just can't stare and swallow the words that your hero's perverted on what we share i'll kill him i'll beat him the cycles repeating i hold thin arrogance still won't you hold him and trust him you love him so much and he still won't care to see your face with an empty smile because i touched that place on you and all the while yep that's not happening better. yeah as i say it it feels like it's discussing cyclical abuse, as I say, the cycle's repeating. If I, if I search abuse of Sid on Google, the first result is abuse of Sid's meaning. It's not even lyrics or hurt, it's just meaning. Huh. Obviously people are thinking, well, what does this mean? I mean... the Binance has their own forum. Yep. Which this will be posted on, so... Makes sense. It will be interesting what we're saying. When we go off topic and start talking about Spider-Man or whatever. <laughs> um, are we all Spider-Man? Now, now, J. Jonah. I need pictures. Pictures of her. Anyway. We should move on to the next song, just a thought, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sicken me. This beautiful sickness. Have an overlap, see? Anyway, just a thought. This is an effective closer in terms of yes. lyrics. Once again, it kind of makes me think a little bit of an album. Hmm. I think it's a guitar tone they're using. Yeah. It, it kind of, of... Probably a little bit kind of judgment error. Mm. I mean, it puts me sort of in mind slightly of specifically the acoustic version of uh, Fragile Dreams. Yeah, I can hear that. My that acoustic album's so good. Mm. If depressing as fuck. <laughs> Opening verse. I swore it had never happen again, but it did, and I think that doing something different, you'd have done the same. It's so very sad that things haven't changed, and I counted all the times I've been crushed. Could I hate you more, but I hate myself so much, the tile floor won't hide these cuts. God, I miss you so much. Now... That's not a lovely, happy point again. <laughs> Now, the reason I say this is an effective closer is because it feels like Unkind opened the story. This ends the story. 
you know, mm. discussing, he realised that he was in a terrible relationship, but for whatever reason, he still misses the person. Yeah. I mean, it's got a very kind of yearning sound to it. Mm. His vocals sound kind of slightly different than the song, I think, some of the others. Yeah, there's, there's a bit more bass to it, I think. Mm. A bit more longing. Mm. That kind of tone of voice he's using, which is very much kind of, this is sort of like a really bad situation. I mean, there are certain songs you can hear that the vocalist is kind of, some kind of means quite a bit to them, and then kind of the voice changes because of that, even if it's unconsciously. It seems like there might be kind of thing happening here. Mm. There's a lot of emotion put into it. Yeah. Again, it's a simple but effective song because a lot of the lyrics are refrains as opposed to choruses or anything like that. Mm. There's something of a structure. Mm. I think there's so, much, so many songs use a kind of basic verse, chorus, verse, chorus structure, and it's kind of annoying. Yeah. One thing I've noticed with pretty much all of the Hurt stuff that I've heard is they don't really do the verse, chorus, verse, chorus. They do more of a refrains and layering, mm. and it's all verses. Well, it's like it's, just, it's, like it's a completely issuing choruses entirely. Yeah. Well, some bands do. I like it when bands do that. I mean, I've had some really good bands that you know, do use the whole verse, chorus, verse, chorus. I know some of them do it occasionally. Mm. But that's what happened a month, I'm Yeah. But on the other hand, I mean, I know Iron Maiden have a problem with you know, doing it a bit too much sometimes. Oh god, some Iron Maiden songs is you just find yourself going, okay, are we done now? <laughs> I know some of that stuff is way too long compared to where it should be. Yeah. So oh, this song could have ended like three minutes ago. Of course, it doesn't help when you're adapting things like Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner! Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is a really good song with them. Yeah. It's a really good song, but I do feel it goes on a bit too long. But the problem is, they're adapting a poem that goes on for too fucking long. <laughs> oh, this isn't about Iron Maiden, this is about that. So. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about the lyrics is it's kind of an internal conflict with how he feels about the relationship, but at the same time, a resolution of how he feels. Because. Maybe that's what it's about. I mean, both of them, you know, releasing a song like this probably would actually, you know, help him personally. Mm. You know, his own way of saying, yeah, I'm over it. Yeah. I and mean. Kind of like closure. Yeah. I mean, the last two refrains, and still I, I think it's wrong the way you left me alone. Oh, I, I think it's wonderful the way you left me alone. Hmm. He's conflicted, but he's recognising that how things were left. That's where it had to be. Yeah. Um, this resonates quite a bit with me. How I've had situations where contact has been cut off completely and i felt shit about it, but I've been mm. able to recognise that it was kind of necessary. There's no other way this could have gone, really. Yeah. There's nothing that can be done about it, so you just have to you know, come to terms with that's what has happened. Mm. But, yeah, um... Ah, final track, Yearn. Uh, this is the second instrumental. Really quite a beautiful piece. Um, all sort of classical instruments. Yeah. In fact, I, I think it's just sort of like violinist and cellist. One of them, J. Lauren Wentz, would be the violinist because there are pictures of him playing violin, so it would make sense. Uh -huh. Yeah, J. Lauren Wentz, lead vocals, guitar, violin. Uh, yeah. Not his own. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to end on, really. Mm. But I think it's effective because it brings things home. You know, it's sort of. Mm. It's one of those. This has been quite a heavy album, not in terms of music, but in terms of content. You know, lyrically, it's been a very heavy album. So let's ease the listener out of this so that when they stop listening, it doesn't feel jarring. Again, we get to the sounds of the psyche. It sounds like it's the sort of coming to terms with things sound, I feel. Mm. Well, it's kind of like a, a little bit like an eulogy, I guess. Yeah, I can hear that. Kind of let things down here yeah, and yeah, it's over. This is the remnants of what we are. Mm. But it's kind of transitional piece, I guess, between you know, all the full-on heaviness of the lyrics. Yeah. It kind, of, it kind of keeps in tune with that, but without, you know, even on a really heavy down on it. Yeah. It feels like the only way they could have logically ended the album. I can hear that. You know, if, if they tried ending it with any sort of song, 
it would feel awkward whereas ending it like this it feels like you're being eased back to reality yeah I can hear that unless of course you have a special edition V release which has like extra bonus songs I don't of course you have the same problem with a lot of bonus songs that are kind of a lot of albums seem to be designed to end in a certain way and the bonus songs come along and just break the entire thing yeah uh, Draconian did that with Sovereign yeah um Judas Priest did that with their most recent album it's yeah, their most recent God Dinner album did that as well with um Vertical it's like hmm we can actually end properly but you got this bonus tracks I like bonus tracks but that's always at the end mm. the album sometimes it does like to end in a very specific way yeah I mean let's see um I think they are planning to do a re-release uh, a remastered version yeah it's been quite a few years. Even though it seems like it's pretty hard to actually get hold of the albums in general, no matter which one it is. Mm. Ah, yeah. The album included two bonus tracks, one previously unreleased, Cellophane, and another, the original version of Talking to God. Interesting. Um, I think we're making the policy here right now, though, that if you have an album we're reviewing, that we probably shouldn't do bonus tracks, not everyone will have. Yeah, because for one thing, you're not guaranteed to find the bonus tracks. And for another, generally, bonus tracks kind of break the flow of an album, I think. Yeah, I'm not saying kind of has a, if, if an album is good, it's generally built in such a way that it's self contained. Yeah, so yeah, um, we won't worry about bonus tracks. Considering what we plan to do with this series, what I'll possibly do is do a special episode that's just covering you know previously unreleased songs or bonus tracks you know separate from the album then we can judge the songs on their own merits as opposed to whether or not they work for the album yeah it's well when they don't yeah it's only bad songs but it just don't work <laughs> yeah anyway um that's it for this album uh the next album We'll be reviewing the consummation next. Again, we'll be having to find any information where we can. But yeah, in theory, we'll be doing that next week if we're both free. Hopefully we will be, unless you Hopefully, have... Yeah. yeah. Well, this is basically my job at the moment, so... So we'll be reviewing the consummation next. Um... Basically, we'll be going through the albums chronologically, and once we've done that, we'll be going through sort of live albums and things like that. And also previously unreleased tracks and special edition things, that sort of thing. I got my This is going to be a long series, most likely. <laughs> so, you hear our plans. So, we'll be doing her for the next few weeks. Uh, yes. And I will be very strict with myself and try to keep to releasing a video a week. So you can actually watch out for that. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it for this album. Uh, as a debut album, I definitely say it's <laughs> one of the stronger ones that I've heard a band release. Yep, it's a pretty good album. Yeah. Um, well, I think from here on the music kind of changes slightly in style, what I've heard. But. Yeah, it, we'll be discussing this, but Hurt is very good at keeping things fresh, and we'll go over that whole side of things as we go through the albums. Um, but anyway, yeah. for this episode, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.